In today's machine learning class, we will see the data pre-processing techniques. Here, in the data pre-processing, uh, we will see the dimensionality reduction and future subset selection. When come to dimensionality reduction, two methods are there. The first one is principal component analysis and second one is singular value decomposition. Let us see these things one by one. Dimensionality reduction. In machine learning, the number of attributes or features which are used in data set are quite high. Okay. And these projects have produced extremely high dimensional data set with more features being commonly used. Okay. For example, so this is our data set. Let us take student data set. Student data set which is collected by college. Right. So in the student data set, the fields are called as attribute or features. Okay, for example, this is register number and this is name and here address. For address, we can use three or more fields, right? And the marks, for example, sorry, uh, year, semester and the section, A section or B section, right? After that, marks of particular section, M1, etc. up to EMN. For example, if it is nine subjects, means nine different marks will be there. And this is total after that average may also be there. Okay. It will go on like this. Right. So here the vertical fields are called as attributes or features of this data set. Okay. So in recent project, the fields are, the number of fields are very high and more number of features being very common. For example, by using these marks, we can easily compute total and average. Isn't it? The summation of all marks is nothing but total and average of all marks is average. Okay. So, we can easily omit those two fields because by using this, we can easily compute. Right. So, this is the fields with the common features. And also, there has been widespread adaptation of social networking which leads to needs of huge data because by using social network uh, they will collect more different data from the customers okay for example for text classification the customer behavior analysis requires very huge volume of data from the customers let us see an example for this dimensionality reduction Suppose if you want to buy a new house. If you want to buy a new house. What are the attributes we consider for a new house? What is the size? That is size of the house. Number of bedrooms and number of bathrooms. After that, what are the crime rate in the neighborhood and distance uh, to the closest school, uh, college, bus stand and airport, etc shopping malls so these are the things we will consider uh, for buying a new house okay so instead of uh, these many attributes we can reduce these attribute size into that is general size so the general size it also includes the number of bedrooms number of bathrooms and the actual size of the home isn't it and next one is neighborhood quality so these attributes may be changed to neighborhood quality so, in, in the neighborhood quality, we can easily understand the crime rate and the distance between uh, all the required uh, school shopping malls, etc. Okay. So, what is the advantage of reducing these dimensions? The size of data set will get very much reduced and the time taken to compute the required output will be very much reduced. So the time complexity and space complexity will be very much reduced if we use only limited number of attributes. Hence, the high dimensional data set needs high amount of computational space as well as time. That is, the time complexity and space complexity will be very high if we use high dimensional data set. And also, most of the features are not useful for all the computations. Okay, if you use everything, then the performance of the algorithm will get reduced, right? And 
most of the machine learning algorithm perform better if the dimensionality data set is limited okay that is the number of features in the data set is reduced then the performance of algorithm will get increased right so the dimensionality reduction helps in reducing the irrelevant and redundancy in future this is important right and it is easier to understand a model if number of futures involved in the learning activity is very less if the data set if the data is very less then it is easy to understand and finally the dimensionality reduction refers to the technique of reducing the dimensionality of data set by creating new attributes by combining the original attribute so this is called as dimensionality reduction in dimensionality reduction first let us see the principal component analysis which is otherwise called as pca this is very popular methodology for reducing the number of dimensions in your data set right so the pca is a statistical technique which is used to convert a set of correlated variables into set of transformed uncorrelated variables which are called as principal components that means the principal components are uncorrelated variables there is no relationship between the variables right the principal components are linear combination of the original variables okay the original variables will be combined to form a new variable and that is called as principal component right and they are orthogonal to each other that is there is no relationship between each other right so uh, the principal components are uncorrelated and they capture maximum amount of variability in data this is important for this purpose only we are using principal component okay so by using principal component we can capture maximum amount of variability in data right here the challenge of the principal component is the original attributes are lost due to transformation that is all the original attributes will be combined to form a new attribute right so this is the challenge we will lose the original attributes for example here we are having x axis and y axis originally and th these are the data that will fall in this area okay and now if the data are close to any of the axis then this will be very easy to compute so for that what we are going to do to reduce the variability we can use the new attribute called pc1 and pc2 okay if we change this x into pc1 then all the data which will be very much close to pc1 hence the computation will be very easy next let us see the singular value decomposition which is otherwise called as svd here svd of matrix that is the factorization of matrix into three matrix for example this is a the size of a is c cross sorry m cross n m cross n is the size of this matrix the size is very huge and this will be decomposed into three matrix so 1 2 3 okay so it has some interesting algebraic properties and conveys important geometrical and theoretical insights about linear transformation and now let us see the formula for svd svd is nothing but singular value decomposition isn't it the size of matrix is m cross n and the name is a for example this is a okay a equal to u v uh, sorry u w v transpose this is u this is w and this is v transpose okay where u equal to m cross n matrix of orthonormal orthonormal eigen vectors of a a transpose and this is u and v transpose v transpose is here okay this is a transpose of n cross n matrix square matrix okay which containing orthonormal eigen vectors of a cap of t 
that is transpose into A. A is this original, right? And W, W is N cross N diagonal matrix of the singular value which are the square roots of the eigenvalues A transpose A. Okay, this one. Right? Here, a very big matrix will be divided into three different matrix that is U, W and V transpose. So, this is called as singular value decomposition. Uh, next, let us see the future subset selection, uh, it is, which is otherwise called as simply future selection. Okay, here the future subset selection is applicable for both supervised learning as well as unsupervised learning. Okay, so uh, this is nothing but finding the optimal subset of entire future set which significantly reduce the computational cost without any major impact on learning accuracy of the algorithm, right? For example, let us take the uh, student record. So, this is the student table and now we want to compute the average, average marks of all the students, okay? So, here we required only the student register number and the average field, average field, okay? So, these two columns are more than sufficient for us to compute the average of all the students in this entire class, isn't it? So, we have to select only the required features from the entire data set. Hence, the computational cost will get very much reduced and the accuracy is also very, very much increased, right? And what is the drawback here? The future uh, subset that is the selected subset may lead to loss of useful information. Useful information if we failed to select the proper subset. Right? And certain futures are going to be excluded from the final set of futures used for learning. Right? So, uh, future subset selection we have to be very much careful for selecting the required field. Okay? Suppose if we failed some of the, uh, that is if you lose some of the attributes means the elimination of those futures which are not relevant are redundant or selected. Okay, redundant means repeated. So here if we select total, total field and total and average means we can easily compute average from the total, isn't it? So those two are redundant. So, we have to omit the redundant field here. Okay, we have to select only the required field so that the computational cost and learning accuracy will get very, very much increased. The computational cost will get reduced. Uh, so far, we have seen the data pre-processing techniques. The first one is dimensionality reduction and second one is feature subset selection. In the dimensionality reduction, we have seen the principal component analysis and singular value decomposition and in this class we have seen only the introduction about all those topics and in future we will see uh, the corresponding example for all the methodologies okay thank you